Welcome to Public Forum, a community outreach program produced at North Idaho College on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Featuring guests from around the globe addressing a wide variety of subjects, Public Forum serves to educate and enlighten. Please join host and moderator, political scientist Tony Stewart, in welcoming today's guest. One of our very favorite programs to do is travel logs or travel programs. And today we're going to take you on a trip, uh, and we call it Life in Argentina. In order to do this, we're very, so pleased to have two guests on our program. I first welcome to the program Lisa Wickman, who is the immediate care director of the North Idaho Medical Care Center. Lisa, welcome to the program. We look Thank forward you. to this trip to Argentina. Thank you. And we're equally pleased to have K.J. Torgerson, uh, who has been for the past year the interim director of the Human Rights Education Institute uh, in Coeur d'Alene, and she's held other positions uh, dealing with um, such things as uh, environment, ecological issues. And K.J., welcome to the program. Thank you, Tony. And as always, I'm pleased to have our two regular panelists with us today. Uh, first of all, Janelle Burke, an attorney in the state of Idaho, and next to her is Erna Reinhart, who is the director of public relations at North Idaho College, and Janelle Burke will commence today's questioning. Well, Lisa and KJ, it's fun to have you here, and we're very excited to hear about your adventures in Argentina. KJ, how did you happen to decide on Argentina? Well, my father, who's 72 years old, has discovered this place. Um, his old Navy SEAL buddy, son, was working on a dude ranch down there. So his first trip was down to go visit the dude ranch and, and their family. And he loved it so much, and he's very much an avid fly fisherman. He decided he had to have his own his own place. So he's over the years found the spot he wants to be, and he rents a home part of the year, and he goes regularly. And so, where in Argentina are you going when you go down there? Well, we on our trip went to a couple different places, but my father lives in the northern part of Patagonia called San Martín de los Andes. Thank you. And Lisa. This was your first trip, so how did you get there? For people who would want to go to Argentina, what's the route from North Idaho to Argentina? <laughs> well, it was a bit of a trek to get there. Um, we started on a Thursday morning. I think we left my house about 5. Um, the flight from Spokane to Seattle, Seattle to Dallas, and then the long trip was Dallas to Buenos Aires, which is about 13 hours. So, And then we ended up... Um, getting to the regional airport once in Buenos Aires to um, on another plane for about an hour and a half to get to our first destination, which was Mar del Plata. So, But the way back, it was a different flight, which was a little more convenient to go to Miami instead. So, But it's a long trip very long, to get there because yeah. you're going the almost from one part of the world to another part of the Indeed, world. Yeah, if you count trip. from the minute I left my house to the minute we walked into our hotel room, there was 36 hours. Thank you. I'm already tired when you're starting the program. <laughs> Not That's that many flying. Trip. It was, I think, 17 hours in the air and 17 of driving and layover. And that is very tiring. <laughs> With that, Erna Reinhardt. Welcome to the show, both of you. you. KJ, um, give us a little bit of a geography lesson and explain to our viewers where Argentina is. Well, it's sort of the southern third of South America, and it's on the eastern side of the Andes, whereas Chile is on the western side of the Andes. And um, the southern third of Argentina is the famously known Patagonia region. And which part of the country did you travel in? We went to three, or actually four locations. Um, we started out in the Atlantic coast at Mar del Plata. And then from there we threw a flew all the way across to the, um, the sort of northwestern area, the, which is Mendoza, the wine country area. And then we ended up in the Patagonia area, which is, again, that southern third. And then we went to a couple different places in Patagonia. All righty. And Lisa, tell us a little bit about the language. And I would love to hear about a little bit about the music. <laughs> well, it's, it's Spanish, um, but it's different Spanish than I had known. Um, I found out while I was down there that the, you know, the double L that you learn in Spanish is a ya. And in Argentina, it was a ja sound. So I was thoroughly confused much of the time and just let KJ take over speaking. I did a lot of sign language. <laughs> yes, nice. um, it, the, the music, well, we would hear a lot of um, a lot of American music, a lot of places that we went, but of course, um, the tango was originated in Buenos Aires, so um, visiting a tango restaurant and listening to that music was quite a treat, too. And in the two weeks that you were there, Lisa, was it a combination of um, doing things in the city and doing things in the country, or was there a certain 
uh, area that you stayed in? Was it more city than country, or was it a combination of both? Well, that was the, the nice thing about the, the trip and the way KJ planned it was we saw just so much diversity. Um, the first destination south of Buenos Aires, Mar del Plata, was just basic city. So it was a lot of shopping, and it was interesting. You know, people stay up till 1 o'clock in the morning shopping and dining at midnight with their, their toddlers, which is, you know, just so different from, from us. We had a hard time staying up for a while. Uh, but then when you go to um, the complete opposite in San Martin de los Andes, um, that was just the time to relax and put on your shorts and really get in touch with nature and um, the rivers and mountains. And so it was completely different, a lot of diversity. It's nice. Very, very neat. We rarely do a travel log that we don't take people on the trip visually. And KJ, thank you for sending those down here to us, the photographs earlier. And, uh, we can watch the monitors, and they're going to put up a number of, we're going to show about 14 uh, photographs, and both of you can participate. Here's the first one. Uh, this is where uh, Argentina is located. Um, KJ, you've already described pretty much it's in the southern part uh, of, of South America. I guess the one thing I would add is that the climate in Argentina and the Patagonia area in particular is exactly like North Idaho. Exactly. So in third January, it's like our mid-August. And that's part of the reason my father's chosen to go down there, because he loves this type of climate, and now he's extended it year-round. Well, that's very interesting. And photograph number two is coming up next. And, and where is this? Mar del Plata. And it's a, a resort beach community that's very European-like and largely family-oriented. Family it was every one of those tents had kids under it. And I guess they're not tents, but ball ballerinos, I think. <laughs> you need a lot of people to do this process, yes. And we'll go to the third photograph. That was just an example of the architecture. The architecture in Argentina is, is very grand and a lot of rock and woodwork and stucco. Very beautiful. Is this a residential area yes. or a home? That's the Barrio de los Troncos, I think is what it was called. Okay. And we'll move to the fourth photograph. This is in um, Mendoza in the wine country. This was the second place that we visited. Um, we visited this, what, which one was this? Zucardia? Yeah, I think Family, it was. Familia, mm -hmm. Zucardia. Yeah. Um, took a wine tour. And the, um, the speaker would speak both in Spanish and English. English. There was, I think, only three of us out of that crowd that And I assume those English. large tanks behind have wine in them. Uh, really large production. That's one of their um, big productions. And then we'll go to number five. Wine isn't a very up-and-coming commodity in Argentina anymore, <clears throat> and more expensive in the U.S. as their imports. And this is a wine vineyard <laughs> here. <coughs> yes, it is. And this is the one, the next picture has, we ate lunch at this one. Um, and this is one of the largest, most famous ones. And that's the lunch you had there, or part of it. Yes, why don't you talk about lunch, Lisa? <laughs> what you ate for lunch. <laughs> you like making fun of me. Um, it was such a beautiful lunch. They had uh, wine with each course, and we got to the, the meat, and there was something interesting I didn't realize. I really didn't know what it was, but I figured we were at a beautiful restaurant, and I would eat it. It was some kind of a sausage, and it ended up being um, blood sausage, if you've ever had it or heard of it. And, I didn't know what it was, but I ate it anyway, and I liked it <laughs> until I found out what it was a few days later. I was a little embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> and number seven. This is um, the northern Patagonia. This is just a day or two after we landed in that area, and it's a lake near Bar Barilote de los Andes. Um, the lake is Lake Huape, and it's 2,500 feet. So as you can, I don't know that I pronounced that right, but you can see that it's, it's so very beautiful. like it's around here. Well, yeah, and with the mountains and that, just it's And it's even full of Pinus ponderosa pine trees all over Argentina. Same I'm just trees. fascinated though, about the weather being <clears throat> the same as ours. That's amazing. And number eight. That's the Zhao Zhao Hotel. And as impressive as it is, we weren't impressed with the fact that you're not even allowed in the front door if you don't have if you're not staying there. So you can't even go in as a tourist to look inside. So I assume you weren't staying there. No, no but we tried to get in. <laughs> we but wanted you, a peek at it, though. You did get a photograph, though. It's, it's incredible. It's breathtaking again. And the ninth slide. 
This is um, a pass that we went over to get from Bariloche to San Martin de los Andes. And this is in the northern part of Patagonia, but we went through an arid point after you leave the airport and over this pass. It was definitely a little bit different type of climate, more of a sort of a Snake River type area. Mm -hmm. It looked a lot like that. And it's, it's really a large country, too. It's, it covers a lot of area. And the tenth slide, it's another beautiful lake, isn't it? That is a lake that San Martin de los Andes is on. And um, I hope you remember the name. Lago. I, I don't remember. I can't remember either. I can look in here real quick. But um, you know, there's no houses on it. Yes, that's the sort of thing it's to know. In, in a natural state. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is a, there's a story behind this young child. Yeah, this is um, my dad's friend, Marty. His son is Michael, and he's the one that ha lives in Argentina, is married to an Argentinian woman, and that's who how my dad got his original connection down there. And this is Marty's daughter. Do you remember her name? I don't remember either, but she's wearing a gaucho outfit. She's from a family of gauchos, so they all we went to dinner with them, and they all had their gaucho clothes on. Yeah, we wanted to show that. That's why we selected that one. And the 12th slide. And interestingly, she was the exact same age as my daughter, who was at home. <laughs> so I was wanting to hold her a lot that night. Mm -hmm. Go ahead about this one. Um, this was the area that we, we stayed at after our float trip. We, KJ's father was kind enough to arrange a two-day guided fly fishing trip, which is where I learned how to fly fish. Um, but it was just amazing to be able to stop and have our entire um, camp set up. I've never gone camping and not done all the work, so it was quite a treat. But these are the tents that, that we stayed in. KJ and I ended up shacking up in the same tent because they forgot to bring sleeping bags for us. So, so we slept in the same tent with coats and <laughs> coats and, and fleece <laughs> covering you, us. You really did rough it that time, didn't you? <laughs> Number 13, slide 13. That was also another Mar Marujo night. Yeah, they, they cooked, cooked us for they that for it, dinner, yeah. but at that point we knew what it was. Well, that was the night that we found out what it was, mm -hmm. yeah. And here's the fishing. Well, this is sort of a funny picture because that is a perch. We were fishing for trout, and I caught four perch on my fly rod. So we were just kind of laughing at the fact that we caught a perch on a fly rod. Yeah, and that's um, that's Herbie. Herbie, a guy. Herbie, and on Herbie the... was um, very impressed with KJ's fly fishing skills to the point where he almost didn't like her. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't get me funny. close enough to the bank because he didn't. He wanted to test my casting limits. He'd never. And it got never. very frustrating. <laughs> and the reason I'm not fishing is because he didn't have any patience to teach me. The, the other guide was was absolutely amazing and spent a lot of time with me. But so I decided to just sit back and watch. And this is the <laughs> it was very windy, river. very yeah. windy on that river anyway. And so. our last slide's coming up. Again, fishing from a stream. Yes, that's a different guide, Martin, on the Calipo River which is near Lake Makina. And again, I'm probably not pronouncing those now that I've left, I'm not getting it quite right. But um, it was a little rough stretch, but we had to get to a good spot on the other side. Martin's an American, he and his brother, uh, they have built a little cabin on a beautiful little lake. Um, Malakina. Yeah. Malakina, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they do guided fly fishing trips, their families out of LA. And so it was neat to get to know them. In fact, I have a magazine here that they sent home with me. I was eating at their restaurant, and the brothers in here. There's a nice spread in in the magazine, so it's that's nice, nice memorabilia. I know our viewers really join me in thanking you. You've you've taken them on a visual trip, and with that, we'll turn back to Janelle Burke. There's so many questions I want to ask you, but uh, let's start with with you, AJ, and ask you about family life in Argentina. What kinds of family lives did you observe? Um, well, as Lisa alluded to earlier, it's it's definitely a very strong family culture, and it was very interesting that when the parents go out to dinner, the kids go too. It's you don't get the babysitter and leave them home type of thing, and they are up till late at night, but then everyone sleeps in until ten in the morning too. So I guess it it works out. But they're very active. I mean, we saw them on the beaches and do moms everywhere. work? Do moms work outside the home? Uh yes. No, I don't think as much as here because there's definitely women in the restaurants and the shops and things. Um, there's a lot of nannies. Nannies help. The nanny um, rate of pay is very low and very common for people to have housekeepers and nannies for just a couple hundred dollars a month. And um, Lisa, what about, do they have pets? Do they ha Did you see a lot of animals around? 
or did you not see very many animals? We, no, we think I, of we, no. we think of various kinds of animals as being in the Andes and the the alpacas and the and the beautiful uh, yeah, kinds the, of of wolves. The um, no, as far as animals, I guess I really didn't see that many. But the red deer is um, definitely well. That deer we saw was brought deer. into yeah, Argentina. It is an exotic. Um, a lot of cattle. And we think of that because that's economy of Argentina is built on um, cattle right, ranching. Right. Uh, so you probably saw some gorgeous, beautiful, big ranches. And uh, what about oil wells? No. Mm -mm. Because I think there's supposed to be a large, lot of Argentinian oil um, that we yeah, I didn't see that in that area. we hear about. But there um, really was a lack sort of cats and dogs and mm -hmm. yeah, things like that. that. What about cars? What kinds of cars did you drive or use or see on the roads? Variety, all smaller, typical, more European type cars, the smaller cars than we have. Um, KJ's father has uh, picked us up in Argentina in his um, Land, Rover. Land Rover. It was just a big, massive um, <laughs> piece of equipment, really fun, but uh, ended up breaking down five miles outside the airport. <laughs> So then I hitchhiked. My first experience hitchhiking ever <laughs> got us a ride back a to the rest yeah. of the time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I understand that you did some shopping, and so I'd like to have you do the show and tell portion of the program and share with us, KJ, some of the items that you purchased while you were there on your trip. Well, Argentina is known for its leather, hence all the cattle and their beef, which was delicious. Mm -hmm. And so this is a sort of a leather purse briefcase. Um, that just a, a leather product to show. And then this is very common, and I bought this for my husband, and he loves it. The men wear, it's not a gaucho hat, but it's it's their version of a cowboy hat. Right, and that's very hat. common. Very common, very inexpensive. I think this was um, 30 to $40. That was the tourist pay. I'm sure locals get it less. And, and would this, you ty this type of purchase, excuse me, was all like in, the, um, in San Martin, De Los Andes, and again, the... The culture is very different from the first photograph when we saw in um, Mar del Plata. You know, that's a beachy area where, where we bought, you know, fun, more hip clothing, I guess you would say. Um, but this was all in more country type. I'm actually sitting on this, and it will cover my expression, but I can't talk much. But uh, this is... That uh, is beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? That is just gorgeous. So they would you buy those in an dinner. outdoor market, or was it a leather store, or what was the store like where you purchased both the, the handbag and the hat and the wrap? The hat was the outdoor market, and everything else was a nice store. Mm -hmm. Lisa will show what she has. It's a table runner. Hand She's woven. got a few of them. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. And that was, um, I think, 10 or $15. The, the dollar's three to one. So you're, and, and in addition to that, their economy, their, a dollar, their dollar buys a lot anyway. So it's a very inexpensive place to travel. And would you say, I don't know if you guys went with other people or if you went by yourselves, but would you say that it is a country where it's safe to travel as women? Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, was it was just the two of us. We never had any trouble of any sort. Excellent. Mm -hmm. The first night that we were uh, in Mar del Plata, we met some people from Australia, some people, actually some, um, people from the United States our age that were actually living in Buenos Aires and working in Buenos Aires. And, spent some time with just meeting lots of different absolutely wonderful people from all over but the people of Argentina are um, just very very nice helpful they enjoyed they'd walk past us and hear that we spoke English and they would always stop and and talk with us and they enjoyed that but and there's a lot of expats down there a lot of Americans mm -hmm. everywhere we went we met Americans that were cho choosing to live there interestingly though KJ and I both looked like we were from there. This, oh my gosh. Which, you know, with my dark hair, that makes sense, but it was a real big surprise to see as many, you know, women that look like KJ with Half the blonde the hair, hair and blue eyes. It's very wow. interesting, yeah. And you did say earlier also, KJ, that the weather is very, very um, similar to what we have here in North Idaho. And being that we are such a recreational paradise, are there any parallels there in terms of backpacking, hiking, water sports, mountain biking, those kinds of things? All of it. When we got off the plane, almost everybody either had hiking, climbing gear, fishing rods, bicycles. Um, yeah, the, lake, the lake where my dad lives, they have the 
sailboats, windsurfers, kayaks. It's it's a very athletic place. And the locals recreate. Mm -hmm. I mean, they okay. Yeah, and tell, you should tell them how you skied there when you were. Oh, you that's trained. right. This was my second trip there. So I was in Verilote for six weeks, and I was 17 um, training to ski race on their mountain. So there's skiing, the very big, and soccer, of course, is a big sport there. Excellent. We'll talk about two other issues. Uh, one of them is religion. I know it's uh, Argentina would be, and being Spanish, it's very much Catholic. Did you have any discussions or observations with? Uh, what percentage of the population is um, very religious or tends on a regular basis, uh, so like mass or, or other religions that you, you saw in the country? I didn't see a whole lot of other religions. Yeah, I, I remember. I, yeah, I it's it's strongly out. immigrated from Spain and Italy. That's why most a lot of people look like Lisa, and the language was very Italian or Spanish with that undulation. Um, so it's very Catholic. Very country. Catholic. Yeah. The second issue, before going back to the panel, has to do with education. Uh, one of the things we do on these travel logs, and we interviewed a lot of people in Europe and all, the, the year for education or the number of years and all varies from one part of the world to another one. Did you share with any of the people there about their educational system, like what we talk, call our K through 12 here, and then higher education? Did you have conversations about the the educational system? Um, we did, but not quite a little bit different. I mean, they have the universities there, and there's right. a lot of Americans in their universities. We met a couple people that were attending their university, and I think it they might have an extra grade in high school, but I could be messing that up. But they, just like us, they go right on to school, and the women and the men are educated. The, this baby's mother is a doctor, um, for example. And, so the, the, the literacy, of course, is very high in Argentina. The people are well educated. Mm -hmm. And one of the nights that we were um, out, what we thought was so late in Mar del Plata, just walking and shopping, there was a lot of people out. There was um, some younger people, 16, that stopped, heard our our English, and the girl was very, very bright. And um, Marie, I believe her name was, and she was um, study, going to study abroad, and we were very impressed with she and her friends at the um, importance of education. They went they out at it. night with the sole intent of finding people to speak English with to practice their English. Mm -hmm. So we visited for 45 mm -hmm. minutes with Just them. Just on the street, yeah. Mm -hmm. So because of those things like that, you, you do get to have a lot of conversations. And the way you traveled, both in the city and in the countryside, you really, you didn't go there just to stay uh, at an American hotel in the city and not get to know the people. And of course, with your father there, it was a really enriching experience for you. And it was um, less English-speaking pe people than most places I've traveled. So if we hadn't been with my father and, and his family, you would have been forced to use your Spanish. The first half of our trip, we were forced to use our Spanish a lot. And we met, met many, many people in places and restaurants that had no English. So one of the advice to <laughs> Americans going there, either speak Spanish and, and the dialect that you're talking about, or you better have a guide with you. Definitely, I would highly recommend. I would have been in a really bad spot had I not had KJ. I took you know a few years of Spanish in school, but that was years ago, and I haven't used it in so long. But KJ t was did really good, and she well, made a, <laughs> she made a point of saying, "Let's only talk in Spanish today." But there was a couple instances where you know we were having much difficulty speaking and communicating with people, where we're like, you know, they don't know what we're saying. We don't know what they're saying. We're just throwing yeah. our hands up. So. Definitely, I would highly recommend. But it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful country, indeed. Janelle Burke. The tango is one of the things we think about when we think about Argentina. And it's beautiful music, and the dance is beautiful. Uh, tell us what it's like to go to a tango bar, tango restaurant, and, and what you observe when you're there. Uh, let's start with Lisa. Well, this is an interesting night for us. We just, um, at the last minute, you know, trying to decide what we're going to do for dinner. and. Ended up making at ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Ended up making a, a tango show. Um, there was one seat left for us, but it's um, you know there's a stage, and at, then there's tables. So it's a restaurant. So you they have um, a gentleman singing, and then they would have tango dancers and a, a man and a woman and on stage while you eat your dinner, and put on that show for you. And then when you're finished with dinner, when they could tell everybody was done, they moved all the tables off to the side like like a high school dance, people just kind of 
you know, get shuffled around and sit at, their t at these tables that are all pushed off to the side, and then people uh, would just come out of the audience and start dancing. So, for instance, a, a man and a woman that obviously were very good just started dancing, and then other people would start dancing, and just, like I said, like a high school dance, somebody would come up and, you know, these men in their 80s and ask you to dance, and, and then the professionals would come down on the floor and um, teach people. So I spent like three dances um, with a professional man and teaching me how to, to tango, and it was just an absolutely blast, absolute blast, a wonderful experience. Can I, I danced what? twice with both seniors, 70 plus men that were phenomenal dancers, <laughs> didn't speak a word of English, so they're trying to instruct me in Spanish. And uh, I wasn't, it was a little early in the trip, so I hadn't quite honed in on some of my Spanish. And I, I can't, it was one of those things I, I can't think about my feet if you're talking Spanish to me. <laughs> Just, I, it's a very, very difficult dance. It is. It's one of, interestingly, one of the steps that um, they do, the man will have his foot placed, and then the woman, when, you know, standing opposite, you slide your foot directly right next to his foot to keep your balance. And so that's part of, of um, a key portion to that dance, but definitely interesting. And they wear special shoes, right? The yeah. dancers Just might have, but the guests... I, yeah, I do believe that they have a special shoe for it, but it's just a... If you're really good. Heel. Yeah. If yeah. you're really serious about this dance. Yeah. yeah. About 30 seconds, Anna. Oh, share with us a few of the issues that are in the country that, that people there are, are concerned about or talking about, and we have tiny bit amount of time. <laughs> we arrived like three weeks after President Bush was in Mar del Plata and there was a couple hundred thousand protesters against him. <laughs> so our, our, our significant others were a little concerned about that, but with no reason because no, we never felt any, had any bad sentiment towards us. Um, that, that sort of, I mean, they don't, they don't like our president, but they like Americans, basically. Excellent. I have to bring our friend to conclusion. As I've said many times on this program, the clock always wins out. And I want to thank K.J. Torgerson and Lisa Wickman. You have been delightful. And uh, thank you for taking us to Argentina. It's been a, a wonderful trip. And thank you for the slides and also the items that you brought with you. Uh, I know our viewers will enjoy this very much. And, and good luck to you on other endeavors that you're uh, doing. And if you go on another trip, come back and see us and share your trip with us. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll be with us again next week at this same time, and we'll move to yet another issue. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. Recorded on the campus of North Idaho College, Public Forum is the longest-running in-house college production on PBS. Each episode is pre-recorded live and is an educational outreach from North Idaho College. Please join us at this same time next week for another edition of Public Forum on this public television station.